Hello, it's been a while since we've done a plant ID video, so we're going to do one for you here today. Um, this is a plant that we sell, but we also uh, have encountered it many, many times in the wild. Um, this is called a highbush cranberry, and it's not related to the cranberry that we know and love. The one that we get, you know, at the grocery store in dried form, or you get in a cranberry sauce around Thanksgiving time. Um, it's not related to that at all, though it is edible. Uh, these ones aren't ripe yet. You can tell they still have some green or uh, yellow on the under underside. They'll be a little bit softer. They're like hard as a rock right now. See, I had to press pretty hard to break that. Um, <clears throat> they'll be ripe kind of late fall, uh, even into the winter to hang on to here. Um, these are these are not them. These are nanny berries. This will be a different video. But a way to identify these is, you look at the leaves, they're pretty distinctive. They almost look like uh, maple leaves. And uh, they're pretty distinctive. And obviously these big red berries, um, not huge, but they're pretty big. Um, these also have, while they're flowering in the early summer and spring, they've got flat cluster kind of white flowers. Almost look like Queen Anne's lace, but not quite. Um, and this is in the viburnum family. So... As you can tell, it's probably about six feet tall, maybe a little bit less. Um, it can grow up to about 15 feet. These other red berries that you see, kind of over here, these are not them either. This is a honeysuckle. Uh, the Latin name for this is Viburnum opulus americanum, and uh, that's for the American variety. There's a European variety that... Uh, they crossbreed readily, so it kind of makes it pretty annoying if you can't find a good, reliable wild source. It's probably because the European varieties have crossbred because the European varieties are pretty uh, inedible. They're so bitter that they're inedible. These are bitter, like a cranberry, but they're not, um, they're not inedible. Um, the only really way you can tell between the American and European varieties is the taste. I've also read somewhere that you can tell, this is going to be very hard to focus in, but sometimes you can tell between these little nodes at the base of the leaf. I'm not sure if it's going to get it to focus. Well, I don't think I can get it to focus, but you can see these little nodes here, and I think for the American variety, I think they're either convex. Oh no, I'm sorry, they are concave. Um, and for the European variety, they're convex or they, they kind of are a little divoted in or flat. Um, I don't know if that's accurate, but it's it's one source that I've read that says that. It could be it could be wrong. <laughs> these are um, these are some dead ones right here. So they're part of the Viburnum family. They have opposite branching, as you can tell uh, pretty well on these dead ones. Um, interestingly enough, I think honeysuckle, which is growing right next to, it, is also part of the viburnum family. Um, I think there's something like 370 something members. Don't quote me on that of the uh, viburnum family. So it's a pretty extensive uh, genus. Um, another thing I wanted to point out about these is they will root pretty readily. So I think most viburnums also do that. Um, so in the winter, when these are dormant, you can you know cut a nice shoot. Uh, bury it, not bury it, but you know, plant it in the ground as far as you can go. You want more below the ground than you do above it. And um, so you do that in the winter or the spring when the plant is dormant or and the, the soil is pretty soft and you stick it in and you let it leave it there for one whole season um, until the next fall or spring and it should be a rooted plant by then. So before you do that, make sure you know that it's the American variety that you want unless you don't care about the European variety, that's fine too. Um, another thing about these is, sorry about the road noise there, it's, we're right next to the road. Beautiful view, but right next to the road. Anyhow, um, another thing about these is they're great food for wildlife in the, the winter months. So oftentimes when there's snow on the ground, these berries will still be here. And uh, especially if you have a nice big stand of them, this is only one bush right here and all these bright red berries are the berries and it's probably a pretty immature bush. Um, if I had to guess maybe four or five years old, maybe less. 
Um, but yeah, birds love these things in the winter uh, because there's not much other food in the winter. So these these will still be bright red when there's snow on the ground. You can tell them from pretty far away, and they're pretty. They're even good for us to eat um, in those months. So they're good good wild food if you're in the winter, kind of roughing it out there. Um, we've made you know cranberry sauce with these when you can find enough of them. We also mix that with Japanese barberry, which is a, a uh, it's an invasive species, but it has edible berries that we can make another video on too. Um, so yeah, this is Viburnum opulus americanum, otherwise known as a high bush cranberry. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, give us a like, a thumbs up, um, maybe share some comments, or feel free to share our videos and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and have a great evening.